Are you still there? I won't touch you I won't feel you I won't hear you I won't see you I used to know you Are you still there? I used to know you I used to care It goes far and wide This cruel device I cannot drive you From my mind I won't reach out I won't strike in I won't dream about I won't pass the thought I used to know you I used to care I used to know Are you still there? I jumped from the top and fell right back And I hit the bricks and run in scared I swam to the bottom of the sea And I asked around for someone who might know me Ain't it sad when your choices are Vegas And your friends 99 flaws and still know where to go 99 flaws and still know where to roam A punch to the head, I pass right out And I'm in the chest, but still I down the strap and stand Once again by the fist of feet I pray for his resurrection home Ain't it sad when your choices and vices Are in vice It's eleven o'clock and don't that make you fall It's eleven o'clock and don't it make
Were you working on Gish with Butch Fig uh, before he was working with Nirvana? At this point, he was just a producer. He'd done some demos for Nirvana, and then we started working with him just after that. Um, but he had he had not yet made Nevermind, mm. um, which was obviously the huge uh, Nirvana album. And then Butch also went on to have his own band, Garbage, which had huge success. What was your relationship with Kurt Cobain? Uh, kind of strange because um, you know we sort of intersected with the same woman, so that's never a good combo. I don't. That know sounds that. like one of your songs. I don't know that story, and it sounds good. What was the intersection with the same woman? Well, um, Courtney Love, uh, her and I dated for a while and then the night I sort of threw her out of my apartment is the night she famously walked down the street and ended up in his bed and then they were a couple after that. Did you get along with Cobain or? Uh, not particularly. He wasn't necessarily the nicest person but I, I think now that I'm older I kind of understand. You know he was sort of like, he was our equivalent of like you know the, the gorgeous high school quarterback. He had a lot of people projecting their version of his reality on him. And uh, I think he was protective of himself, and so I don't think he, he welcomed any, very many people into his world. I think he had tremendous passion, and I think it raised all of our games. He's the type of you know, kind of figure in a, in a generation that makes everybody go, we gotta take this a little more seriously. Right. Because when he was around, it was just like, he was such an incredible singer. You know, when he would open his, his, that mouth of his, I mean, the, the sound that would come out, is a real loss with him, you know. I think I think our generation in particular has really suffered without him. We were a little longer, a little longer to go. You had to kick him out of the band. That was the best deal at the time. We, you go get healthy, you go run yourself into a brick wall, we'll just keep touring out here, which was insane. Can't you see me? What did your former bandmates, James and Darcy, what did they bring to the Pumpkins? And why did that, why did that change? I'm looking at him because he'll give the better political answer. No, I won't. Oh, good. Give me the, give me the non-political answer. Um, high fashion. Ouch. <laughs> nah, he doesn't need that. <laughs> I think they brought an artistic aesthetic that, that Billy and I probably wouldn't have had alone. They were the kind of cool people in the band. They were kind of, they had their ear to the street. They kind of knew it was cool. Like, James and Darcy looked like they could play their instruments, but Billy and I could really play ours. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> That's probably the simplest way to put it. The rumor I always hear is that you play everything except the drums. And that you, that you, you know, left to your, if, if somebody could give you a stick that you could reach over and push record, you guys, the two of you guys can make the record. Is that? Well, we did. That's the thing. That was always sort of the weird thing that we had to live with because when we first started working with Butch, particularly on our first album, he said, they can't play. And so we'll be here all year and never finish. And you can, so you do it. I'll talk to them. And I said, well, it's going to cause a big problem. He said, I'll talk to them and we'll just do it. And he came back and he said, I talked to them and they're cool with it. I talked to them and they said, whatever we need to do. And so it was all fine with everybody that we had this album that was selling and we were touring and everybody identified with the band and it wasn't a big deal to us. We had worked it out internally, but once they started getting negative feedback from their friends, you know, and once the secret sort of started to kind of get out, then they felt pressure to defend themselves. And so in order to defend themselves, they attacked me and they turned into some sort of weird, he's a tyrant, he won't let us play. And that was never the intention. I would much rather tell somebody what I want and have them interpret it and have it come back even better than I would have hoped for. That's like you see the people we were able to play with on your show. I mean, everybody's an excellent musician. I barely have to say anything. We wanted a band that was happy and intact. We used to sit around and say, you know, we, we've got a good thing. Like, we should go on for 25 years. Yeah. We never wanted to be without our band. It's been very painful for us. But at some point, you have to be functional. You have to be sober, you have to remember your parts. I mean, yeah. it got to be a point where they didn't want to be there and they weren't there either emotionally or musically and what are you supposed to do, drag corpses around the earth and call it the Smashing Pumpkins? 
the, something that you did, which I'm so proud of you, because double album is the kiss of death. You actually beat that kiss of death and made it into something that really worked. God knows how. You had a big hit with it, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Everybody I knew had that record and was listening to that record, and it was just kind of, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you're out, and now you're on this huge tour. It should be the, the wonderful time. This is, this is what you work for. But actually... This is coming into one of the worst times, and I, I would guess, in right. the band, because you, one musician that you were working with died, mm -hmm. and you almost died. Yep. And can you tell us about that, what was happening then, and how you got past it? At that point, success was dominating the conversation, not health, not serenity. All the warning signs were there, and so we ignored them because we were on a roll. What are warning? What kind of warning signs would? Oh, I guess him dying two times before he died a third time. Him, um, maybe that would, <laughs> maybe blowing those red flag. <laughs> My father had just died. I mean, I didn't know how to deal with that. I didn't have the resources to deal with that. The band was on full tilt. Nobody was going to stop to let me grieve for my father's death. So I mean, I did it on the fly. I learned yeah. that escapism was better than emotion, and that's where I kind of that's where I kind of hid. It got to the point where, I mean, I really, really didn't care. I mean, I really didn't care. And your uh, drug of choice, were you doing heroin at the time? or? Yeah, life was scary for me, very scary. And then you had to kick him, your buddy, out of the band. Yeah, well, I, I kicked him out because I thought he was going to die. I couldn't, I couldn't reconcile my ambition against his health. Mm -hmm. So the only way to do that was to remove him. That was the best deal at the time. You go get healthy, you go run yourself into a brick wall, we'll just keep touring out here, which was insane. Were you friends or were you, were you pissed off at each other at that point? I think we were initially both really angry. I mean, I think, I think Billy was angry and he had a right to be angry and I was angry and I had a right to be angry. I mean, it was four, five years almost, three, three and a half, four years till I came back to the band and it was really like I had never left. Sometimes you gotta break up with somebody to, to realize how important they are to you. And I realized how valuable he was, but I also realized what was important to me value-wise. So when we, when we came back together, we reaffirmed the values that we believed in, and we stopped going on about things that weren't important. You know, thank, thank God I've come out of it. I mean, I'm five years sober. I don't drink, smoke, use drugs. I've got two beautiful children, a beautiful wife. And, you know, somebody asked me uh, the other day, like, if I had any regrets, and I said, you know, I got to look at my family and say, you know, that regret is like doubting what God had planned for me because, I mean, if all that stuff didn't happen, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So, I mean, I don't know how to explain. You know, I'm sad that things happened, but I'm also thankful for the experiences I've had because where I'm at right now is a beautiful place. You boiled that down well. What was the last, was it December 2000, the Metro shows? That's, right. That's the last... Of the, old lineup of, show. Old lineup show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was that like? You know, you go, okay, this is our last show. Was it tears and hugs on that final night or separate it, dressing rooms? It was everything. All of the above. We'd played with James over the course of 14 years. Um, at one point, he was my best friend. Um, he left that show without even saying goodbye to us. I've only seen him one time since that show. Where'd you see him? I saw him on the street, and he was in a conversation. And I was waiting to go say hi to him, and I turned around, and he was gone. I haven't seen him since. Do you think he saw you and walked off? Yeah, well, of course he did, because I asked somebody, and they said, oh, yeah, you knew you were here. So that's it. So he hasn't seen him since that show, and I've only seen him the one time on the street. You had a thing that you put in the newspaper. At one point, you wanted to try to get the band right. back together. Mm -hmm. And I just read part of it. It says... Um, my heart's Chicago, that my heart is in the Smashing Pumpkins. For a year now, I've walked with a secret, a secret I chose to keep, but now I want you to be among the...